Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy, also known as ETCG1 when posting videos to this channel. If it's your birthday, happy birthday. Well done, you've lived another year. On to today's topic. Hydrostatic lock will kill your engine slowly. Possibly slowly, possibly it might kill it immediately. First, let's talk a bit about what hydrostatic lock is. What does it mean? Well, what hydrostatic lock is, is when the cylinder gets filled with liquid instead of gas. Liquids are not compressible. They're just not compressible. So you try to compress a liquid, not, not gonna happen. In fact, that's what, how hydraulics work. So they use those liquid principles in hydraulics to like move big heavy things because once again, liquids are not compressible. So as long as you can move the liquid, you can do a lot of work with it. So not compressible liquid. However, air fuel, as far as in a gaseous form, is compressible, so you can squeeze that. So really, an engine, like what's behind me, Dark Matter Pikachu, is a giant air compressor. It's not designed to compress liquid. So, if you get any kind of fluid inside of the cylinder, what happens is, is the piston tries to move up against it, but it can't move against it. It's like, it's like being hit in the head with a sledgehammer. You know, once that void fills up with liquid instead of gas that the piston can compress, that's it, game over. It's gonna hit that and it's gonna be like driving into a brick wall at 80 miles an hour, bam. And pretty much game over. And, and when does this happen? Like say you're driving through a flooded area and your engine suddenly stops because it drew in water. Well, that pretty much is the kiss of death for your engine. It was for Dark Matter Pikachu, and this is what I suspect happened. It had nothing to do with mixture. Those of you that are speculating that I burned the rings up because I was running a carburetor, you're wrong. In fact, if you look inside these cylinders, it is virtually perfect combustion. And this is after 4,000 miles, like virtually perfect combustion. Even the plugs say so. Tan plugs mean really good burning. Dark sooty plugs mean too rich and white clean plugs or, or things like that indicate a lean condition. So this had nothing to do with mixture. What this had to do with was back when I installed that other fuel pressure regulator, remember the one that caught the uh, engine on fire? Well, that's been the gift that keeps on giving because when I went to start that after testing for leaks, uh, the engine attempted to start and experienced a hydrostatic lock. Whoa, <laughs> that sucks. But after solving the whole problem with the fire, whoa, well, now there's another problem. So what had happened during that instance where the piston came up and it was filled with fuel was it cracked it. It cracked one of the ring lands. In fact, I think it cracked a couple of the ring lands. And that was my ticking time bomb. And this is how I say hydrostatic lock is one of those kind of things that can slowly kill your engine. It can kill it immediately. It can break a connecting rod straight out of the gate. Well, I went in there and like I said, got all the fuel out, cleaned out the plugs and all that stuff, put it all back together, started up and it ran. It ran great. In fact, I drove it to Carlisle and back and I began to notice during the Carlisle trip that I started seeing a little more smoke out of the breathers that I hadn't been used to seeing before. Maybe after a hard run or something like that, which I didn't do often, uh, I would see like maybe a little vapor coming out of those breathers, but it started getting worse during the Carlisle trip, which about 900 miles. And I got back and then the very next week was the Hot Rod Power Tour, which I ended up leaving early. Because during that power tour, I was sitting in traffic and I could just see smoke coming out from under the hood and I knew that it was coming from that breather. I knew I had excessive blow by and I'm just like, I, I kept thinking actually it was a broken ring and I kept going back to that hydrostatic lock situation. So I left the power tour early and I'm glad I did because that was nine, another 900 miles round trip. Had I kept driving and that ring would have, or that piston would have broken the rest of the way, it could have been a catastrophic failure. Right now, uh, the cylinder walls and everything look good. I'm just gonna replace the piston. I'm not, I don't wanna mess with Calvinator engines work any more than I absolutely have to. So why was the engine running fine and then when you started driving to Carlisle, you started seeing the miss? Well, the piston's constantly moving up and down, number one. But also those rings are not staying in the same location, they rotate as the engine runs. And as that piston gap came around to that point where there was the crack in the ring land, that's when compression was lost completely. It went straight past that. It could no longer compress uh, air and fuel because it was just sneaking past that crack. That ring gap had lined up and was the source of the compression loss. So it started out, it had compression. So the crack was on the other side. There was no ring gap there. Ring gap works its way around to the crack. Boom, loss of compression. The other type of damage that I've seen from a hydrostatic lock situation is it bends a connecting rod. 
And once again, the engine can still run. It might have a little miss, it might not run quite right, but you might think, ah, oh, I got away with it, there's no engine damage. Well, what happens over time is that connecting rod that's bent, so it's not positioned straight. So as it moves up and down over time, like a piece of taffy that you keep moving back and forth, eventually it's gonna snap and break. And that's the same thing that happens with that connecting rod. And I've seen this before. So you, you drive through that puddle or whatever, your engine stops. You get the water and everything out and you start it back up and you're like, yay, I win. And you drive along maybe for like another few weeks, maybe even a month or a couple of months. But then suddenly, boom, catastrophic engine failure. I've seen this more than once and it's hydrostatic lock being the cause. So in my case, it was a broken ring land. The ring gap lines up, loss of compression. Uh, and I was very fortunate because it could have been so much worse. It could have went and destroyed my engine. However, I got lucky and I'm very grateful that I got lucky. We'll move on and we'll repair this and everything will be wonderful again after I spend another <laughs> ton of money. I'm going to give you an additional update here. Um, some people have been speculating on Facebook a problem with the ring gap, which was not the problem at all. Uh, the ring gap was absolutely fine. If ring gap was an issue, you'd see something in here and there's, there's nothing in there. What this is a result of, is, as stated, is, uh, and I took more of it apart, is when the engine hydro locked, I believe it cracked this, and as the ring gap came around, it started uh, filling the space with the combustion and we lost compression and things just got worse from there. Now, I'm not going to just be able to replace the, the piston as I suspected, um, because actually there's some damage to these rings. That pitting is the molly coat that's come off the rings. My machine has pointed this out. This just so happens to coincide with the area that's damaged. The photograph that I showed you earlier, you can actually see it there, and that's exactly how I took the piston out of the cylinder. But if you look at the other rings, these are all good. There's no pitting or anything, and if there was an issue with ring gaps and stuff, you'd have more damage on more cylinders. But everything here, I've removed them all, all looks good. So those rings and these pistons are good. I need to replace this piston and its rings. And while I'm at it, I'm going to do some other upgrades to the engine. Heck, I've got it apart and we're spending money anyway. Let's spend it all, right? Just to reinforce the ring gap thing, since it seems to be quite an issue on Facebook, I'm gonna post a link in the description to the video where we installed the rings and gap the rings on these pistons. So we actually spoke about making a bigger gap because we're making more heat with a turbo setup. Hydrostatic lock, the silent killer. So if you drive through that puddle or something like that, your engine stops and you end up taking the fluid or whatever fluid that was in there out of there and get it to run again, it could be only a matter of time before that engine fails catastrophically. The broken connecting rod, or like in my case, perhaps a broken ring land, it's hard to say, but I have seen this over and over again. And that's why I'm putting this information out there to you. Wonder about your experiences. Have you seen issues with hydrostatic lock? And if you have, what have you seen as far as what are the results of that hydrostatic lock? Is it creep on you like I just mentioned in this video or was it something that happened? Boom, done. Love to hear about it down in the comments. If you have automotive questions not covered in this video, I ask that you head over to ericthecarguy.com that will be linked down in the description for you, along with additional information that goes along with this video, other videos, things like that that you might find interesting. So please check the description if you're looking for additional information. Be safe, have fun, stay dirty. Thank you so much for watching. And don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and do all that kind of fun stuff that helps me make a living. I really appreciate it. See ya.